Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Pipe County near Fishhook in what has got to be one of the only, maybe the only salt box house in the state of Illinois, built in 1835 when all that was around these parts were log cabins. But look at this New England house behind me, built in 1835. Fred Grody, you were also sort of possessed by this house when you saw it, weren't you? Oh yes, I've always been a student of old historical houses and I was absolutely uh, amazed to find this house and find that a house of this nature had survived all these years. It has a very interesting history and we're going to talk about this as we go through the program because there were descendants of the folks that built this house that kind of stumbled on it and then they, they restored it and then it ended up in your hands and we'll tell that story as we go. But tell me first a little bit about the folks that built this house. Okay, it was built by James Seabold and his wife Olive and they had immigrated to Pike County, Illinois in 1835 or before. We know the house was built in 1835 and I assume he was here uh, a, way, a little bit before he started building this. Mm -hmm. The history was told to me is that he had a one room log house that he lived in while he was building this house. Mm -hmm. And he had a family, he had a wife and, and maybe a child or two. Three huh? sons. Three sons, mm -hmm. okay. So they were cramped probably in a one room log cabin. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was building this and trying to make a living at the same mm -hmm. time. He was a farmer. Yes. Trying to make a living at the same time. This may have taken him years. I build. would think it would. He had 300 acres and obviously, of course, at that point in time to uh, clear the land and farm and feed your family and try and make mm -hmm. some sort of living and build a house with your own hands by yourself of this uh, size would have been quite difficult, quite an undertaking. Yeah. Mr. Siebel was from uh, Vermont. So yes. where, he, where he came from, this is what houses look like. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> they call it a salt box. Yeah. This is a classic New England salt box. It's a design that really goes back to the late 17th century and were built up through the 18th century in New England. Mm -hmm. It looks just exactly like houses I've seen in New England of this, mm -hmm. of this era. It looks like a seven, it could be a 1750 house instead of a 1835 yeah. house. Yeah. Are, are we looking at the front or back or do we even know? Well, there's, there's a question on that. <laughs> some people call this the front and some call it the back. To me, it's the back of the house, but um, only because the salt box slopes this way. It's one half stories on the other side, the north side, and it's the one story right. on the south side. And, and what characterizes the salt box is that very steep incline on the roof, is, am I right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. They simply, uh, if they hadn't had the porch and what was originally the stair house, uh, it would have been just a story and a half house. But when they extended the roof down, and in, usually there were rooms in there, but in this case they, they made a porch there. Mm -hmm. So, but that's what makes it a salt box. Okay, let's walk a little closer sure. and look at this porch because there's a lot of, there's some fascinating um, aspects to this as well. Now, it, it looks like there's concrete there now, but that wasn't always the case. Those were, those were slabs, weren't they? Stone they, slabs. They were stone slabs, and there are actually a few of them out in the side yard. Uh, the house has undergone a lot of uh, remodeling work, restoration, uh, additions, and the, some of the original stone slabs are, are now out in the yard to make a sidewalk. Okay, we'll see it, some we'll, of those. In fact, yeah. we'll walk right along them and we'll see what, the, what this was. And, and, and of course, the ladies that you bought it from put this tile down. But yes. these have a story too because mm -hmm. there, there were original posts here that are still here, right? Yes. Um, the ladies wrote in their journal that the original posts, and I'm sure they had deteriorated at the bottom, they were set, upon, they were set on stones and they had cut them off probably reinforced and braced them up and then boxed them in. Mm -hmm. But the original hand cut, hand chamfered posts are still under, or part of the post are still yeah, under they're these They're still boxes. in there. They're still in well, there. Well, that's nice to know, isn't it? Yes, it is. And of course, this is, these would have been here. These were, these are original. These are the original ceiling joist mm -hmm. or joist. And you can see that they're, they're, uh, they're hand planed, hand cut, and they have a chamfer and a lamb's tongue on them, mm -hmm. which is characteristic of 18th century uh, New England work. Now you also have have a real treasure here because this siding on this side of the house is original siding, mm. and they he had a hand cut each one of these just like a split rail fence, didn't he? Yes, these are uh, white oak siding boards. They're split with a fro, uh, hand split with a fro, just exactly 
what you would have done to make wood shingles and how you would have made wood shingles. Mm -hmm. They're cut in approximately four foot sections and they actually, when they lapped them, they put a slight bevel or more uh, bevel on the end so that they uh, gave them some weather protection. Mm -hmm. But because they were under the porch and you can see it all the way up through here, uh, these are all the original hand split mm -hmm. uh, oak siding boards. Mm -hmm. The only other ones I have seen in, that I've ever seen in Illinois are in the Shasted House in Pittsfield, which was built in 1838. Uh -huh. And it, had, it only had a few of them left. Most of the siding had been replaced, but that's the only other time. And I would have to assume that uh, by time lumber, saw and lumber was available, nobody wanted to take the time or effort to hand split siding, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. would have been quite a lot, quite right. a lot of work so, to have done. So that, that era was coming to an end. Yes, because sawmills were, were being built around. Yes, mm -hmm. and you could tell, solid oak. Yes, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now the ladies that lived here that you bought the house from, unfortunately, weren't able to save this siding all the way around, and they they put some uh, s some. Uh, uh, not aluminum, but what vinyl, some vinyl yeah. to make it look like. And it, it's a good job. It looks like it. Looks like it. Um, and if we walk down here, we can see the, the stones that you were talking about. Oh, and we're going to go in that basement, too, because there's a story down there. Mm -hmm. But these are the huge slabs that, yes. that made up the, uh, the porch. Yes, the ladies wrote in their journal that these, uh, these stone slabs were the original floor of the original porch on the mm -hmm. back of the house. Mm -hmm. and that, can you imagine... Haul, now, there were no quarries around here. Hauling all this stuff, he had to do it by himself. He yes. probably had an ox or something, but he had mm -hmm. to do it all by himself and drag it up here over and over. How many trips would that take? Lots, <laughs> lots of trips. Oh yeah. I don't know how he did yeah. it. It, well, would, it would have been a tremendous amount of work. In the front porch work. here, uh, that would have been the same story. Now, that's concrete and tile, but that would have also been those same slabs. Mm -hmm. And, Fred, this is interesting. On this on this side of the house, uh, when the ladies found it, I, I think the addition was gone, but there it was at one point an addition on this side of the house, which roughly doubled the size of the house, I guess. Yes, there was a two-story addition built on the north side of the house and uh, made a few slight alterations to, to how they entered the, uh, the existing house, mm -hmm. but they didn't really alter the existing house. The original floor plan and configuration of the old house is, is uh, exactly as it was. And I, I don't know when the addition was put on and I really don't know when it came off either. I think it was off by the time the ladies, the ladies found the house in 1966. And they actually stumbled on it quite, quite by accident. They were here looking at a family cemetery which mm -hmm. is just up the road and there was an old house down here. And they asked one of the local farmers about about the house, and they mm -hmm. said that house was the house your great grandfather built. Mm -hmm. And they weren't even aware of the house or that the house was still here. And so they followed it up, yes. and that's how they learned yes. all about mm -hmm. this. And they ended up purchasing it because yeah. they wanted to keep it in the family? Yes. So it went yeah. back into the family again. Yes, that's, it did. That's, mm -hmm. that's fascinating. And that was Ethel and Anna Siebold, who were both professors at Illinois College in uh -huh. Jacksonville. I see. And they, they purchased it and restored it to the point that you see it now and used it as a summer cabin and summer getaway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now you, you of course put a new roof on it, but you didn't have to do, it's, it's preserved, it's, it's in good enough shape to, you feel confident it's preserved, you put a new roof on it and now it's. Yes, it, it's, it's stable and it's preserved. It needs an historical restoration, yeah. proper historical restoration, yeah. but it's not really deteriorating any and it, it'll stand a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. it sure has anyway. Yeah, it sure has, yeah. <laughs> Well, Pam, we learned a little bit about the outside of the house, and now we're going to get a tour of the inside of this house. And it's not big, but it would have been big at that time, wouldn't Absolutely. it? This would have been a big house, mm -hmm. four large rooms. That's right. Um, and right now we're in the we're in the living room. But I wanted you to show us the kitchen sure. because because there's a lot about the kitchen is still just as it was. It is. Yeah. So we get a chance to see how they how they worked in there. Okay. I'll follow you. Well, the first thing I notice is, is the fireplace. <laughs> Has the original andirons. Um, no kidding. Those are the andirons that were here. Original oh, to the house. Terrific. Yes, they are. That's terrific. And the bake oven above is, is a bit unusual because usually bake ovens were in the side or, or lower into the fireplace. And 
what they did was build a small fire inside the oven mm -hmm. to warm the bricks. Okay. And then when the bricks were, were nice and warm, they would get rid of the fire they built and put whatever they wanted to bake in there. And they, meanwhile, it's staying hot from the fire below too. Right. right. But when they built the fire in the, in the bake oven and the bricks were warm enough, then they could knock the fire down, the, the little fire down into oh, the coals sure. and not have to... Okay, w would you show us? Certainly. Show us and obviously they couldn't have baked anything very big in there. And... Yeah. Um, a couple loaves of bread. Right. Or could have been uh, left for warming a, as well. A tray, yeah, a tray of vegetables mm -hmm. maybe, or, or, or but but big enough. I mean, right. uh, and uh, and then they just and then just knock the fire back down. That's it falls right. down. Mm -hmm. in, into they the didn't fireplace. have a, have to clean it out. Mm -hmm. And again, these folks, my God, everything, everything is stone. I mean, it's they they haul. I can't believe how much stone they haul. That's hand cut native stone, and of course behind the plaster here would also be the native hand cut stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the, the same stone that you see, yes. see right here. Mm -hmm. um, and while we're talking about plaster, they probably, they probably plastered over these beams, didn't they? Absolutely. Originally, the entire ceiling would have been plastered, and they did that to help with light. Um, probably if I were doing it, not only would I have exposed the beams, I, would, I wouldn't have put any plaster up there at all. Yeah, so. yeah, because you like to, to look at the wood. Right. And you can see that this is hand-hewn. That's right. I mean, you can see that a guy took an ax and he was just working away at that. Right. Um, and and you, don't, you sure don't see that anymore. Mm -hmm. And another feature that is original to the house is, is this, uh, this cabinet back here. Could you open that up for Absolutely. us? Absolutely. It's, it's double-sided. Um, there's a cabinet just exactly like it on the other side. And it was a built-in. Uh -huh. It's out of walnut. And this, this one door had to be replaced. Well, whoever did it did a good job. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Walnut, huh? Walnut. I guess there was a lot of walnut in these parts because there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of the furnishings in these old homes are walnut. Yes. It must have been easy to come It's by. pegged. Mm-hmm. Pegged meaning no nails. Right. Uh-huh. Terrific. Wouldn't it be nice if so many, if more of the furnishings, the original furnishings were here? Absolutely it, it would. It have, even, even the floor in here had to be replaced. This is a replaced floor. Mm -hmm. but, but there is some original floor to the house. Well, if somebody wanted to get it, um, Originally, you can always find old flooring and, and put old flooring, mm -hmm. which is what I would do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've got the dry sink. Um, we have a little plumbing coming into it. They would yeah. not have, but... This uh, is the way their sink would have looked. It would have been like this. That might be a little bit later, but mm -hmm. uh, a good rendition. They, they would have brought their water in mm -hmm. and, and, and done their dishes in something very much like that. Yeah. Fred, this is probably the biggest room, or actually, there's one upstairs the same size as this, yes. I guess. Mm -hmm. But the but the house itself is 18 by 30, which makes this about 18 by 18, I guess. This, and this is a big room for a house. Yes, house. this is a very big room for the time. It is approximately 18 by 18, and in uh, 18th century New England, it would have been called the parlor, mm -hmm. and. I don't know if it was the parlor then or when we went from a parlor to a living room, yeah. but this would have been a uh, what we would call a living room now, and it would have, have been the main room of the house for entertainment. Probably had a four-poster bed in here for mom and dad, and all the kids slept upstairs. So you had the kitchen, living room, master bedroom downstairs, uh -huh. and the kids in the workroom upstairs. Okay, and as we're going to see, it really was a workroom because that it wasn't used as a bedroom; it was used as a workroom because the quilt hooks are still on the, still in the ceiling, right? Yes, they are. So, so mm -hmm. mom and dad might have slept down here, and of course, it's plenty big. They, this could have been the kids could have had their board games here. Mom could have knitted and crocheted and stuff mm -hmm. in here. Dad could have had friends over for cigars in here and chased the rest of them out sometimes. Mm -hmm. If there was anybody around yes. in those days, I mean, uh -huh. I don't know if anybody had friends. I mean, they were out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, this is this would have been the parlor. And of course, this small house has four fireplaces. Yes. Which is mm -hmm. remarkable, I think. Yeah. There's one in the basement, one in the parlor, one in the kitchen, and one in the upstairs bedroom. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and this is, we saw the kitchen one. This is very, very much the same as, as the kitchen fireplace. Yes. Mm -hmm. And of course, they, uh, they had a built-in cabinet, which you saw on the other side in the, mm -hmm. in the kitchen. And this is an identical uh, built-in walnut cabinets that opened to uh, this side. Okay, so yeah, the, 
this would have been kept, like I say, the books and the kids' games and stuff mm -hmm. in here. All your household belongings. Yeah, right. And which the kitchen would have been stuff very on few. the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was, if there was any, any entertaining going on, this is where that was going on. It's interesting now. This, th these are the doors openings the same mm -hmm. size as the the, the original doors. I, I believe they are. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I believe they're the correct and appropriate uh, sizes and openings. The windows have been changed, but it did have this original single front door and then a double door in the back, which I have seen in ha in houses in New England. Mm -hmm. You don't think of a double door being in an early house, but they did do that. Mm -hmm. And this little window that we see over here, this is this would have been the size of the window that the house had. That's that's the appropriate size window. Mm -hmm. That's probably actually the pro the location it was. I suspect they didn't move that. The house does retain, which you can see right below the window, it retains the original uh, wainscoting and chair rail that ran all the way around the room. No kidding. And that, that's a classic New England uh, architectural feature. Mm -hmm. The window is the proper size. The gable end here would have had two windows that size in it. Uh -huh. And then the window beside the front door, which is now a wide window, was replaced with a wide window, would have been a window that size mm -hmm. also. And that would be, that's what I would expect to see. That's what I've seen in early New England yeah. houses. Mr. Siebold, we were talking about how he made that siding out on yes. that side mm -hmm. of the house. It looks like he probably made this too, because yeah. I think you described this as tongue and groove? It's tongue and groove with a bead, what they mm -hmm. call a bead on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm sure he did make it. Mm -hmm. I think there's probably been some, some repair and replacement to it, but I, I actually believe that most of it, and, and the ladies wrote in the journal that most of the uh, wainscoting was original wainscoting. Yeah. The, the uh, casing around the doors and windows is obviously all new because the windows and doors are not the mm -hmm. original windows and doors. They did have some of the old moldings and they had those duplicated. That is the correct pattern and that is the pattern yeah. of what was here originally in the original house. There's another fascinating uh, uh, feature about this house. In order to go upstairs, you had to go outside. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and go out on the porch, and there was an entrance to the stairway. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what a hoot. Yeah, that's <laughs> called the stair house. I, I, I've seen that before, and I've seen it in some early houses. I, I think the theory was all the kids were upstairs, and mom and dad maybe had some privacy. And we yeah. put all the kids upstairs, but but there was no access to the second floor from inside mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. You did have to go outside yeah. and go yeah. up, go upstairs, well, which we'll take a look. That's at. changed now because yeah. if, if you go with me now, we'll show that now the the entrance to the to the stairs is through here, mm -hmm. um, which became a bathroom. Yeah. But, but before you would go out to the front porch. Yeah. And uh, which was right there. There's mm -hmm. a door there from the porch, and these are not the same steps. This is the location where the stairs would have been to go upstairs after you have to go outside. Yes, this is the original uh, staircase well, what they call it, uh -huh. where you had to go outside then come up these stairs. Yeah. And this would be the uh, bedroom for the children up here. Okay. Which it had, it, it, it's small, of course it has a fireplace in it, but it mm -hmm. was probably intentionally small so that they could attempt to heat it. Yeah, 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 and, and kids mm -hmm. don't, uh, they don't mind sleeping in close quarters no. anyway. Mm -mm. And there would have been a, would there have been a wall here separating this from this larger room? Yes, there would, would have been a board partition. Uh -huh. The board partition is still on the other side of the chimney stack. When you get in here, you can get a pretty good picture of it. Mm -hmm. That's the board partition, and there would have been one on this side. And there also probably was one downstairs separating the parlor uh, and the kitchen. Yeah. And I mentioned, now this was what we, what you called the workroom, they called a workroom, and we mentioned those quilt hooks that are hanging yes. from the ceiling. Yeah. Um, this was a workroom. This would have been the workroom yeah. and the storeroom, where mm -hmm. they would have stored any, any possessions they had, and the uh, hooks for the original quilting frame are still in the ceiling, yeah. wow. and they would have probably had their sp spinning and uh, spinning wheels and uh, quilt frames mm -hmm. and all the... Uh, uh, necessities that they needed to operate a household mm -hmm. would have been and, in And here. also, in, while we're in this room, unfortunately, most of the flooring is not original, but there is some, isn't there? Yes. 
And why don't you stand yeah. on that? Or I believe these three boards right through here, mm -hmm. which are um, wide and they are oak, and they're in with square nails, I believe these are the original floorboards of what would have been in the house. Unfortunately, the rest of them are gone, but there are a few, so we mm -hmm. do know what they look like. Well, Fred, if there's anything that lasts, it's the basement because it's all stone. Yes. I mean, uh, not much yeah. that can rot away there, you know. No. And, uh, and they built a good one because this basement goes under the cl clear under the yes. entire footprint mm -hmm. of the house, doesn't it? Yes, it is. It covers the whole whole house. It's a, quite a remarkable basement. Yeah. And a huge amount of work for one man to uh, Oh, my God, to, to dig that and yeah. then to lay all that stone that we're going to take a look mm -hmm. at. Can we go down? Sure. Okay. Thank you. Go right ahead. Oh, they're steep too. Yes, they are steep. Again, I keep, I, I keep bringing this up, Fred. I hate to be, you know, repeat, but I just can't get over the amount of stone that man hauled I can't on either. his own. And you tell me that this floor, he could have laid slabs, but he didn't. He laid them vertically. The, they are laid vertically, and I really don't know what the theory is. I, my best guess is it had to do with drainage mm -hmm. to, to help keep water and moisture from coming up to or up through the floor. Mm -hmm. That's my best guess, but I, I really cannot answer that. And I've never seen another, another cellar floor. I it, have not either. I've yeah. seen plenty of them with slabs laid like this, mm -hmm. you know, horizontally, but not vertically mm -hmm. like that. They obviously did some cooking down here. Yes. This uh, would have been what they used as a summer kitchen and to escape the heat and keep most of the heat mm -hmm. out of the house in the summer, they uh, had a fireplace in the basement. And that, that's a very good, uh, very good picture of the, of the uh, fireplace. All, all four of the fireplaces are essentially the same, mm -hmm. the same size, the three we saw upstairs. Yeah. They're all shaped just a little bit different, but, uh, but they're all very similar. This chimney keep... goes up, clear up through the, the same location, yeah. all the way up through the house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are four flues in the in the chimney stack. Mm -hmm. The chimney stack's eight feet by eight feet. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the stone walls and and the, the the basement covers the entire house. It's the eighteen by thirty foot, mm -hmm. um, and actually, it's fairly deep basement. Yeah. Even I, you know, I can stand yeah, well, up. You're, you're in about it. six one or six, six two, two, right? Yeah, yeah I can, you can stand, stand up. up it. Mm -hmm. And you can, but these are these are really solid. Now he may have made a mistake. He left. You don't see this very often where they leave the bark mm -hmm. on the beam, and there's a reason, I guess, for that. Cause I, it looks like I he's think, running yeah. some rock. Pa powder post beetles work on them when you leave the bark mm -hmm. on them, and a lot of some of them do need replaced. There's a lot of work needs to be done here, but a lot of them, even though they don't look very good, they're real solid. You can stick a knife in there and you go about three eighths of an inch and uh, they're, they're solid. And, and but there's two or three down. broken ones yeah. right yeah. now, which, which needs to be addressed. Yeah. And the uh, ladies, I think, had replaced the sill. And it's hard to see. No, I don't think so. I think that is the old original sill on top of the stone mm. wall. Might be able to see it better. Well, I can't it's hard tell to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but while we're in this neck yeah. of the woods here, um, this is this is a mystery to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's been to every everyone that's been here and seen <laughs> it. There's this, this small basin built in the floor, and there's no drain in the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. I have I've looked. I've had it cleaned out before, uh, so it doesn't drain water out. Um, nobody really seems to know why it's there or what it was for, unless it's the forerunner of a sump pump um, where when water did come up, mm -hmm. you could, it would come up into that first, but you'd have to do a lot of hand buckets to get it out of here because it, it doesn't drain out. So I kind of like the fact that it's just a mystery basin, yes. right? Yes. It's a mystery uh, basin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe one of your viewers can <laughs> tell us what That's it's, right. Tell Phone us in what and tell is. us what this is used yeah. for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fred, when the Seabold ladies that you bought the house from found this house, it was well, it was so overgrown, it, it almost hid, didn't it? It yes. was almost like nobody could have found this house. That's right. Mm -hmm. It was just about uh, just about gone, and I'm sure if they had not found it, that the house would have been destroyed like a lot of the early houses have mm -hmm. been. Mm -hmm. You can see the condition, the condition it's in when the men started working on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
And I mentioned earlier, you know, it was a stroke of luck because approximately 200 yards north of the house is an early Seabold family cemetery. And they were actually here looking at the cemetery when they saw the house and were informed by one of the uh, locals that the house had been built by their great grandfather. Mm -hmm. They weren't even aware of the house until that time. Mm -hmm. And um, they were uh, as fortunate that the house, uh, that they found the house and the house found them because if they, if they hadn't stumbled upon it, I'm sure it would have been lost. Yeah. It's, it's, it was very nearly lost. It looks like it was falling in. Mm -hmm. Well, nope. Fred, uh, you, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, oh. I was going to say it's an excellent example of a hand hewn timber frame building mm -hmm. still standing in central Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Thanks to you and Pam. You're welcome. Yeah. Glad you came. And to our viewers who, who may have thought this 1835 salt box was fascinating, this could be your lucky day because this house is for sale. And you can learn more about that by going to the website that we post on this, uh, on this program to learn more about it. Well, it's been an education for me, I hope for you too, with another Illinois story in Pike County. I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching. Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.